This video is brought to you by Ground News. Today, Evgeny Prigozhin has been killed. Japan releases Fukushima wastewater amid protests, Trump is arrested again, and North Korea fails to launch a spy satellite for the second time. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Thursday the 24th of August 2023. Wagner mercenary chief Evgeny Prigozhin has been killed in a plane crash north of Moscow, according to Russian aviation authorities. Prigozhin, who just two months ago led a short-lived mutiny against President Vladimir Putin, was reportedly one of ten on board the business jet flying from Moscow to St. Petersburg, when it crashed near the village of Kruzenkino. Also on the flight list was Dmitry Utkin, a Wagner Group co-founder and Prigozhin's right-hand man. According to Ian Petchenik from Flight Radar 24, within about 30 seconds, Prigozhin's jet plummeted about 8,000 feet from its cruising altitude of 28,000 feet, and that before then, the flight data showed no indication that there was anything wrong with this aircraft. Petchenik added, whatever happened, happened quickly. At time of writing, the Kremlin has so far remained silent on the crash and Prigozhin's presumed death, though Russia's investigative committee has opened an investigation into the incident. Now, planes do sometimes crash, and accidents do sometimes happen. But the dramatic death of a man who, exactly two months ago, led a rebellion against Russia's military leadership has naturally left almost everyone thinking the same thing. Was this Putin tying up a loose end and ending the threat posed by Prigozhin once and for all? There's currently a large absence of verifiable facts surrounding the incident, but the picture will surely become clearer as time goes on. A Wagner-affiliated telegram channel declared Prigozhin a hero of Russia and a true patriot of his motherland, who had died as a result of the actions of traitors to Russia. Other Wagner-linked media channels claimed that a Russian air defence missile had shot down Prigozhin's plane and that the crash was preceded by two bangs. When reporters asked US President Joe Biden about the news, he said, I don't know for a fact what happened, but I'm not surprised. There's not much that happens in Russia that Putin's not behind. Many had wondered how Prigozhin had gotten off so lightly after becoming increasingly critical of Russia's war effort and then launching and aborting a rebellion two months ago. The deal struck was meant to see Wagner fighters and Prigozhin relocated to Belarus, and while a number of fighters did so, Prigozhin seemingly popped up in different parts of the world, including Russia, over the following months. Just a few days ago, a video was released of him supposedly in Africa with Wagner forces. His death could have serious implications for the Wagner Group, its actions in Ukraine and Africa, the Kremlin, and Russia as a whole. We're putting out a full video on exactly this over on the TLDR News EU channel on Friday, so be sure to check that out. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Japan has, this morning, started to release the wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the ocean. Ever since the nuclear disaster in 2011, Japan has been collecting and storing contaminated water in tanks. In total, they accumulated about 1.34 million tonnes of the contaminated water, which they will filter and dilute and then release over a 30-year period. Now, it's worth saying that Japan's plan had been approved by the UN's nuclear watchdog, as they believe that the impact on people and the environment would be negligible. The move has caused China to ban imports of seafood from Japan, and there have been huge protests this morning in Japan about this decision, with some believing that it just isn't safe. The fear is mainly because of the tritium contents. However, this has been diluted down to less than seven times the level allowed for safe drinking water by the World Health Organization. And this is before the water is released into the Pacific Ocean, where it will be further diluted. Irrespective, locals largely remain unconvinced, with some divers admitting that they no longer feel safe. So that's what's been happening in Japan today. Let's move and discuss what's been happening in the US. Last night, the US Republican Party held their first primary debate, although notably without the clear frontrunner Donald Trump. Trump had previously made clear that he would not be attending the debate, citing the fact that the public already knows who he is and what he did in his presidency. 
Instead, the former president opted to take part in an interview with Tucker Carlson, which was released on Twitter yesterday, potentially in an attempt to rival the Republican debate. This won't be the biggest event this week for the former president, though, as today Trump has announced that he will hand himself in to authorities in Georgia for charges relating to attempts to overturn the 2020 election. For his part, Trump has denied any wrongdoing. Once Trump hands himself in, he'll have to pay a $200,000 bond and will have his mugshot taken. This photo will be made publicly available. Other Trump allies have already suffered this indignity, with Trump's former personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani currently being the most significant figure to have had his mugshot released publicly. It's unlikely that today's arrest and mugshot will significantly hurt the former president in the polls, as it will play into the idea that he's been the victim of a witch hunt. North Korea has announced that its second attempt at launching the country's first spy satellite has failed, but vowed to make a third attempt later this year in October. The failed launch caused Japan to issue a brief J alert, ordering residents in some areas to seek shelter, though this only lasted 20 minutes. According to North Korean authorities, the first and second of the Cholima-1 rocket's flight were normal. However, an issue in the third stage caused the mission to end in failure. A first attempt in May at putting a reconnaissance satellite into orbit also failed, and the rocket crashed into the sea. South Korea, Japan and the United States have condemned the launch as a violation of UN resolutions, with the US State Department saying space launch vehicles incorporate technologies that are identical to and interchangeable with those used in ballistic missiles, including intercontinental ballistic missiles. The launch came a few days after the US and South Korea began annual military drills that the North has claimed is a rehearsal for an invasion. We end with some uplifting news from Pakistan, where eight people were successfully rescued from a broken cable car dangling nearly 300 metres above a river canyon for more than 15 hours. Seven children between 11 and 15 and their teacher were using the cable car to get to school when a cable snapped and the cart was left hanging. Drone footage shows just how precarious a situation they were in. A helicopter managed to rescue two children before nightfall. Then a daring nighttime rescue attempt using a makeshift chairlift successfully saved the remaining passengers. Anxious crowds had gathered on both sides of the ravine, located in a mountainous area where it's common to use chairlifts and cable cars when a journey by land would take significantly longer. That's all for today, but if you want to stay in the loop until the next one, then you'll want to check out Ground News. A website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven and objective way of reading the news. That's because every story comes with a visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations. It's not just that either, I especially like their blind spot feature, which highlights stories disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. For example, this story on rising water temperatures in the Gulf Coast is a blind spot for the right. So if you only get your news from right-leaning sources, you might have totally missed this. Meanwhile, this story on China's proposed training facility in Cuba is a blind spot for the left. So you might have missed that story instead. Now, you may be thinking, why should I be paying attention to partisan sources at all? Well, part of being informed about the world around us is also being informed of potential political slants and echo chambers. That's because if we know where these views are coming from, we'll be better equipped to not only spot ongoing bias, but to engage in healthy dialogue with those who hold different views. In fact, I know I've personally benefited a whole lot from ground news. I've gotten much better at spotting political bias, and I've surprisingly challenged some of my own views too. As such, I highly encourage our viewers to give Ground News a try. We're even offering a 30% discount on their Vantage plan for all TLDR viewers. And that includes access to a feature called My News Bias, which is basically a dashboard for your news diet. Sign up to find out how your reading habits change over the next week. What are your top sources? Are you engaging with diverse perspectives? What about your favourite topics? Find out with Ground News Vantage, which is 30% off only using our link. 
So make sure that you go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link in the description to get started and support an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.